Welcome back to OCN Network and Healthy Living. My name is Dr. Victor Oranusi, a medical doctor and also a pastor at Our Nation Living Fountains Church and World Retreat Center in Los Angeles, California. As for those of you that have watched this program before, we deal with issues that, pan that pertain to our health where we take responsibility for our own health by taking advantage of what God has already given to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. In today's program, you will be blessed as you listen and pay careful attention and apply what you have learned in your own life. Because faith without works is dead. It doesn't matter how much faith that you have. If you don't apply yourself, if you don't put work to it, if you don't act upon your faith, it is dead. That is why God loves us so much and has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness so that we can take advantage of it to survive. Before, we, before I continue this prayer, I want us to pray. In this program, as you pray, ask God for wisdom. Ask God for understanding. Ask God to give you the grace to be able to apply the knowledge that you acquire to your life, that you will profit from it and be the best that God has called you to be and walk in divine health and sound mind. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for this grace to ponder on your word and to see the deep secrets of your truth, that which you have provided for us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Father, that you are faithful. As we hear, Father, give us an understanding mind. Help us, Father, to understand your truth and be doers of your word and not hear us only. Even as you give us knowledge, Father, help us to apply our heart unto wisdom. Be able to apply the knowledge that you are giving to us so that it will be to our own advantage, that we will walk in wholeness, that your name will be glorified. Thank you for your faithfulness. Be thou exalted, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, we are in healthy living the program that deals with issues that pertains to our health. Before we continue, I want us to go to the scriptures and read in the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 to 7. This is our foundation scripture that will allow us to understand the basis for this teaching. And every teaching that I have given previously on healthy living. Let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 to 7. He say, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ, according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by this ye might be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. That is love. You can see in this program, it's, sorry, you can see in this passage, the word of God is reminding us that God has given us all things that pertains to us, that will allow us to prosper, that will allow us to be the best that he has called us to be. That we will never lack any good thing. You see, he has given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness. 
everything that you need to live life and live it abundantly, God has made provision for it. That provision is in every area in his word, in the, in the food that he has given to us. It's our responsibility to take advantage of it. It's like God will give you a gift or somebody gives you a gift. If you don't value that gift, you will put it on the side. Somebody may give you an envelope. You may not even bother to think to open that envelope. You don't know what's in that envelope. You throw it aside. Maybe 10 months later, you open it and you find out something that you needed to solve a problem. It may be money, it may be a document, it may be information that you could have used months ago to solve a major problem that brought shame to you, but because you did not value it, you put it on the side. The same applies to the gift of God, to every provision that God has given to you, because God is a faithful God. He said that those that put their trust in him, they will not see shame. Jesus bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. The Bible said that he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for iniquity. That is, he took the punishment for all our sins so that you will not say that this is happening to me because of something that I did yesterday. Jesus is, the word of God said that Jesus has already paid the price for it. So that if you believe you are saved, you are forgiven, if you believe in Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, he died and rose again to justify you. You have been saved. Your sins have been forgiven. So that you will not say, oh, it's because of something that I did yesterday. So that provision has been provided for you. For you and I through Jesus Christ to forgive our sins. And the Bible says that with his stripes we were healed. That is the punishment that he was inflicted upon his body. He took the punishment that would have been inflicted on your own body. So any disease, any infirmity that could have come to you, maybe as a consequence of sin or mistakes you've made or generation sins in the family, Jesus has already bore it upon himself. He took upon himself every disease, every element, everything that can disturb your peace, he took it upon himself. So that by his stripes, the Bible says, by reason of that punishment that he took, you have been healed. So you can see that everything that we need to live an abundant life, the provision has been made by our God. He say, I will supply all your needs according to your riches in glory, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So through Jesus Christ and through the knowledge of him, you have everything that you need to live life and live it more abundantly, to live a healthy life, to walk in divine health, to walk in sound mind and a peaceful spirit. So the word of God reminds us that every provision, say everything that you need, all things that pertains to life and godliness, things that you need to live abundant life, things that you need to walk in a godly life, to live a godly life, which also helps you. Godliness helps you because the word of God said that it's profitable here on earth and also in heaven. So when we talk about living a godly life, it's for you to profit from the provision that God has given to you. So God has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of him that have called you to virtue. That is through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you know him, you know the power of his resurrection. The power that raised him up from the dead. That power is still working to raise you up, to deliver you, to restore you. That power that defeated the devil. Because when he rose up, the Bible said that God highly exalted him above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. That is, at the name of Jesus Christ, every disease bows. 
everything that will trouble you bows down to the name of Jesus because he is the head of every principality. So no walk of darkness, no infirmity, disease, anything that will trouble you, they bow down to our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Bible said, the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. So anything that presents evil and darkness, disease, they bow down to the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus that lives in you. Jesus that has made provision for you and I. And if you continue in this passage in 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 to 7, you can see from verse 4, it says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. See, he has given us exceeding promises. What are those promises? We just talked about it. With the stripes of Jesus Christ, ye were healed. With his stripes, you have been healed. Not that you are going to be healed. By reason of his finished work on the cross of Calvary, you have already been healed. Because he already took taking the punishment for your sins, washed away your sins, position you to now enjoy the blessings of God, which include divine health and sound mind. So those are the promises of God. And it is through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ can you enjoy it. Enjoy it so that you, because you have escaped the corruption, the corruption that brings sin, that brings trouble, the corruption of the earth that brings destruction. But through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have been delivered to walk in wholeness. That is why in verse 5 we say, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. So faith alone, it's not what you need. It's not enough. You can have faith to walk in divine health, but if you don't take responsibility, then you fail. You have to take responsibility and do the right thing and honor God in your life and stay away from trouble and take advantage of the provision that God has given to you and I. So you need the knowledge. The Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. So that is why you see, add to your to virtue, add knowledge. Doing the right thing, you have to know what to do. You need the knowledge to know what to do. If you lack knowledge, you will not know what to do. That is why the word of God says, if you lack wisdom, ask God for wisdom. Because wisdom is the application of the knowledge that you have. Proper application of knowledge. If you're unable to apply your heart, apply the knowledge that you have, then you lack wisdom. Because you may have everything, have the knowledge, but it becomes waste. So you need the knowledge first. You need the knowledge, my people perish for lack of knowledge, the Bible says. People actually die for lack of knowledge. It's one of the things I was just discussing with my medical students that I teach in the hospital. I remind them the importance of educating the patient. And I see this even in private practice. You see patients, the, because of lack of knowledge, they do the things that are contrary to their health. They eat what they are not supposed to eat. They take medications that are not supposed to be taken, over-the-counter medication that you can go and just buy from the store. That is contrary to their health. They live a lifestyle that is destructive because of lack of knowledge. That is why we emphasize this knowledge, the importance of knowledge. That is why... I do this program so that through the knowledge that you acquire, you can apply it to yourself. That's wisdom. Proper application of knowledge. You apply it to your life. It allows you to walk in wisdom. It allows you to take advantage of 
the provision that Jesus Christ has made available for us. The provision that God himself at the time of creation gave to you and I. The food that we eat, which is God's own medicine. He gave to us everything that we need. The need to be active, these are God's medicine because he gave you the opportunity. And he said, and to knowledge temperance, that is self-control. Again, self-control applies to your lifestyle. You don't eat anything that you want. You know yourself, you know your body. Also, you need to know things that will be a blessing to your health and things that will destroy your health. You hear this on television, you hear all sorts of information. But if you don't take advantage of it, it becomes useless. That is why knowledge is important. Self-control, temperance, and to temperance patience. Many times people will start doing the right thing. They give up prematurely because they don't have patience. The words will say Rome wasn't built in one day. Common sense will tell you that when you plant a seed, you have to water it. You have to give it time to germinate. So everything that we're going to talk about today and in subsequent programs will point you out to the same thing. Walking in the wisdom of God by a proper application properly applying the knowledge that you acquire to your life to maintain your health. And you see, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, that is love. Because God is love. Today I will focus on Applying God's own medicine. Applying God's own medicine. I've been practicing medicine for the past 17 years. That is the, since I finished my training. My specialty training in internal medicine and geriatrics. Over the past several years, A lot of emphasis was laid on medication, medication. But in the past few years, medicine is now recognizing that medication can only take you so far. It's a temporary measure. Yes, there are wonderful medications that have been introduced in the market for health and they are working. But the health professionals in the past few years have now discovered that medication alone cannot, can only take you so long. In fact, if you don't apply your heart unto wisdom, if you don't change your habits or your eating habits, you will act contrary to the medication. If the medication is supposed to be 80% effective or 90% effective, by your lifestyle, by the way you live and what you eat, it can cut down the efficacy of that medication down to 50% or less, even 30%. But we can take advantage of God's provision because he said that he has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So God is smart. He gave us everything, but you need to discover it. And one of the things that I will, you need to discover is the importance of applying God's own medicine. In the United States of America, this is the cold season, the beginning of cold season. The fall season is approaching. It's, we're already on, in the fall season. And we're, very soon we get into winter. And this is the season where as the weather changes, people start getting flu, influenza. Or people start getting cold, having cold, frequent cold. And there's often increased hospitalization of patients that have respiratory problems. 
that people don't remember that God has made so many provisions to take care of these, that no matter what's going on in the atmosphere, God has already made provision to solve that problem. That is why he said that he's given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness. Everything that pertains to life, that you need to be an overcomer. The first thing he gave to us is his son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins and rose again to justify us. So that when you believe in him, you are partaker of that healing that Jesus Christ has paid for, so that you and I will walk in divine health and sound mind. But the provision of God, as I said, requires you to take responsibility and take advantage of it. As I mentioned, having a gift is one thing. Being given a gift or a present, as some people call it, it's one thing. But taking advantage of it and using it properly is another thing. If I give you a gift, for example, and you need that gift to solve a major problem, if you don't value that gift, if you don't recognize that this is something that, will, that you've been praying for, that you need to resolve a major problem. You will not take advantage of it until some others, until it's too late. But God has given us his natural medicine to heal us. Today I will focus on the food that can act upon your immune system, to boost your immune system. Because strong immune system it's important for you to fight off infection. Remember, we live in this world. Satan engineers so many things that goes wrong in the life of people. According to John 10, verse 10, the word of God says that the thief, God, Jesus himself, called Satan the thief. You see, the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I am come that ye may have life and have it more abundantly. That is, Jesus is saying that he came that you and I will have life and have it more abundantly. So Jesus came to give us an abundant life. And that abundant life is found in his word. So as you take advantage, that is, of God's word, you can overcome the thief who is the devil that comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That is why you see people getting sick, you have cold, you have this. And God is saying, I have given you provision. I gave you my son. But I want you to have responsibility. Take advantage of what I've already provided for you. Number one, trust my son. Believe in him. Take advantage of my word. Acquire knowledge so that you can have, as you walk in wisdom, you can be able to overcome every issues of life. No matter how much they rise up like a flood. Because you know who you serve and you understand him and you declare his word that the spirit and they are life over the enemy. And you stand your ground. And how do you stand your ground? One of the things you must do besides you trusting in him. It's for you to also apply your heart unto wisdom to take advantage of every provision. There are so many food that God has provided for us to be able to maintain our health. In the next program, I will emphasize that, especially dealing with in season where people are always sick, Getting sick, going to the hospital, missing work, missing productivity, missing spending time with their family because they are sick, they have severe cold, or one thing or the other. But when you go back to God's medicine that is already given to you, you will find out that God is smart, that his word is true. I want the word of God to be real to you. 
In subsequent program, you will hear the details of this God's medicine that he has given to you. Remember that Jesus loves you. Everything that you need in life has been provided by the finished work of Jesus. He bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. That is, he took the punishment for our sins. With his stripes, we were healed. That is, by the punishment that he took upon himself, you, are healed. you have been made whole, you have been healed, if you believe. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that he died for your sins? Do you believe that he carried all your griefs and sorrows, anything that will bring grief and sorrow to you? No matter what it is, he has paid it all. No matter what it is, he loves you, he cares for you, you and I. He has made provision for you, for your help, because he has given unto us all things that pertains to life. As you begin to apply those things, to your life, taking advantage of those provisions, you will walk in divine health. Why don't you trust him today? Pray with me. Dear God in heaven, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I trust him as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, forgive all my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. Renew, give me a new heart quicken me to know you, to be rooted and grounded in your love, in the name of Jesus. I thank you that my sins have been forgiven because I believe in you, according to the word of God. Wash me, fill me with your Holy Spirit, enable me to continually walk in wisdom, to love you, to know you, to love others, to be who you have called me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Please send your donation to OCN Network. It's a seed that you are sowing. I don't like to call it donation, but I say send your seed because every seed that you sow will bear fruit because that's the word of God. Write to OCN Network for any questions. You can reach me through this station also, if you have any questions about what I teach or what I have said. Remember that Jesus loves you. Remain richly blessed. Again, my name is Dr. Victor Oranosi, a medical doctor and a pastor at All Nation Living Fountains Church. Tune in again for our next program that will bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. <music>